Hey, what's going on, Big Mike? Just came out here right here in a, on a sandbar off the of Mississippi. Trying to switch it up. Pretty good, pretty good deep hole right here. So we figured we try it right here. We're gonna try it here a little while, then one that moved down to one of the wing dikes, maybe. But it's a pretty fair sized hole right here. So we want to give this a shot. I mean, want to try this for a bit. Hopefully, these suckers cooperate. I know uh, Danny Stone and them boys been down the river. Catching, you know, getting on the channel cast stuff, but I don't know. Huh? Don't fish those creeks too much, but hey, small town, how we doing? Big Mike, I fished this spot. Uh, well, you guys kind of see how point this sticks out. There's actually a boat ramp right there. And I had my dad here back in, uh, oh, November, I guess. And we, and I caught a pair of 30 pound blue cats off that gravel bar up there, that rock pile. But it was quite a bit warmer then, so I'm going to give it a shot. It was a balmy uh, 14 degrees when we left the house. Warming up pretty good. I tell you, don't feel too off bad off the sandbar at all. I got my buddy with me too, Joe. He's like my, pretty much my little brother. It's been not dang fine with a year since we made a fish together, so we got out here today and hopefully we can get into a few fish. We're gonna try this for a little while, then we may end up moving down to one of the dikes down the river. It'd be nice if the place worked out because this is like one of the easiest spots I could ever imagine to get to on the river around this area. Chunks of ice floating down the down the river here and there, but like so we're just slightly off to the off the main current, so it ain't like we're gonna have to worry about it getting getting in our line or anything. So Rod, y'all can see me. Got a big head piece of shad on one rod, big body section of the middle rod, and the outside rod with the secret. I've got a uh, chunk of chicken. I'm not sure Kujo is going to bait it, but I think he's got bait shrimp. Actually, one of the trash shrimp. He's going to put some shad stuff on the other rods. So.
Hey, Chrissy, how are we doing? Yeah, I've got <clears throat> there's a big hole right here off this little point. I dropped down. Kind of a, kind of a scour hole, so. I've got one rod right on the edge of it. i got one in the middle. Then I caught cast one slightly on the, over it, out in the main channel. Fish here too. What's going on, Lance? Hey, boxer, how we doing? Boy, it's, it's brisk out here, but I tell you what, it's a uh, absolutely. Pick up a cat or two, maybe. A few boys I know, they were fishing this spot back in September. Yeah, slamming a uh, sturgeon. A little bitty old sturgeon. And uh, one of the guys I know, he was fishing here for sturgeon. He caught a 72 pound blue cat on a little piece of red worm. Just down about a hundred yards. Hopefully these fish will cooperate in this high pressure system. I mean, there's a pretty good hole water out here as far as depth, so hopefully these fish are packed in here. So we got a wing dike we'll hit down the river. We'll give this a little while. This don't pan out. Hey, Aaron, Ron, how we doing? We'll give this a little while. This don't pan out. We'll head to this. Not the normal uh, wing dike. I do a lot of fishing off, but one down the river a little bit. Got a little deeper water. I got my buddy with me, Cujo. We'll be able to both line up on that thing, and uh, we should be able to see both our rods. I know. Georgia Fishman, how you doing, buddy? Haven't seen you. Haven't seen you in chat for a while. Thanks for coming in. Well, I probably could have bought a container of night crawlers with this and uh, got some fresh bait. Cause I had to use, we had to use frozen bait today. So all our uh, bait holes were frozen solid. So, hey, Big Skip, how we doing? Thanks for coming in. Yeah, the nights has been dropping. Ben and Fowl, how are we doing? It's been dropping down into the uh, teens around here. So, but that water temperature is definitely, definitely way down. Hey, Jello, how are we doing, buddy? Yeah, Jello, me and my buddy, we had talked about Baldwin. Just it's one of the places it's always a safe bet to catch fish, but man, we're like, no, let's go after some big fish.
Well, I'll tell you what, the river is crazy. How, uh, hey, backwoods whiskers. Oh, go, you're a pirate. Man, I tell you what, y'all, I want to get up her. I want to get up her in the worst way and hit that lake. Because there are some giants, and I know a uh, hook catfish has been. I think he just caught a 50 in his last video. That's a pirate can. But then uh, Martin says something about LaSalle Lake, and I know Epic has said LaSalle, well, it's only like another half hour past, past there. So I'm definitely making that trip here for long. Hey, Chunky, how we doing, buddy? But yeah, I may uh, try to hit LaSalle or uh, pirate can here in the next month or so. We'll see what my work schedule brings and everything. John boy, how we doing buddy? Well tell you what this river is clear as I've seen it in a long, long time. I mean there's probably shoot, there's probably three, four bit foot visibility. Yo, Joe, if I get to LaSalle, I think I'll definitely uh, decide some catfish. I'll be throwing uh, some bait and trying to catch some uh, hybrid stripers. I love catching the thing. They just stopped a crap ton of them at Baldwin, but it's going to be a few years before they uh, get any size to them. That's what, yeah, yellow, that's what Epic was talking about, Pirate but I know, I, uh, LaSalle, but I don't know. It's about a three and a half hour drive uh, to Pirate and then four hours to LaSalle for me. So. Waiting where to cast that one, too? <laughs> yeah, I almost thought about it. Over there to the rocks. I know it's kind of far, but then. Yeah, one goes down there, boy. It's sticking out. I mean, you'll be out in that main channel, that's for sure. I wasn't going to cast it real far. I'm just yeah. Kind of went back to the hole. I might just barely cast it. Are you right there? I, yeah, I threw one just right there where that, where that slack water and that current is. I just barely lobed that one. Man, there's some freaking water right there. Yep. We had one do that over there at Baldwin the other day. That's what it looked like. Oh That's my god, I got it. Yeah. It looked like, it looked like ball and saw The horn went off and there we all went. <laughs> hey, that's definitely right, Jello. Sometimes you need to thank for those little, yeah, got my little channel cat. Which I don't catch a lot of channel cat. And that stretch of the river on, unless I get now, if you go up river the way that the creek comes in there, and you can catch a snot out of them up there. Or, and I've got those spots down further I can catch a channel cat, but yeah, I don't catch a whole lot of channel cat. 
but I'm usually out on them wing dikes, so. But, uh, this spot right here, I, we possibly pull some channel cat out right here. Just, when you're really like, well, you're really baiting right here, there's a big old ledge right there. Big old, big steep ledge. You can feel the bait hanging as it comes, comes up that ledge. Backward with well, we're about to left right, but when we left the house this morning, it was like 14. Early this morning was 12. When we left the house, it was 14 degrees. But it is definitely warm. It's supposed to get in the high 30s here today. You know? Maybe it's the sun reflecting off the sand, but it ain't bad at all, really. But me and my buddy, we both work outside for a living, so I mean, you kind of get used to it after a bit. Hey, dude. Huh? I'm going to say, hey. <laughs> hey, everybody, I'll do you. <laughs> Me and this fool know each other in our entire, pretty much our entire lives. And man, we usually always hunt and fishing. But he's been working up north in Chicago for god dang how long? Six months. Six months now. And it's been good dang there, eight months. Six, well, six, seven months that we've done any fishing. You and we were fishing together. And he's been in several the videos and stuff. So. Heck, it's a heat wave down here. I know. Compared I to didn't that. want to scare your audience. I was going to wear my thong. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to see that. No, I know. <laughs> Like I said, we'll get this about, oh, a couple of hours and we'll, uh, this don't pan out, we're going to move down to one of the wing dikes. That's one thing about this wintertime fishing. It's, it's a game of patience. you got to let them baits soak. And plus, the baits we had, they're froze, so they're kind of thawing out now. I'm sitting out there in the bottom. Probably could have bought rods and I caught it. Probably caught some drums or some other stuff here for fresh bait, you know. Hey, Lee Evan, what's going on? That's what we're trying for, Lee. We're trying a little different spot than I normally spot this. There's a, there's a point come down actually the boat ran off that point and we got a big deep sky hole right here the nice eddy out there so we're gonna try this spot for a little bit i came back here in uh november and fished with my dad and i caught a couple 30s here while we were fishing so if my dad don't get around too good and this is an easy spot for me to get to so we came here and i i was kind of surprised with the results but that was back in November, and the water temperature was a heck of a lot warmer than it is now. So, I've been wanting to try this spot this winter, so. And plus, it's super easy to get to. But if this don't pan out, we'll make the hike to one of my wing dikes here. After a while, we'll have to load the truck back up and head down the river a few miles, and No, it's not bad at all. I 
think after each shutdown, we just get down there by the river and shut down. That was all real. No, I think that and the sun reflected off the sand right Yeah, it definitely makes a difference. Yeah, we went to drive our rod holders into the dang ground. Holy crap. I bet it took 15 minutes just to get these rod holders to be in the ground. That servant, we had to beat through probably a good 10 inches of just solid, solid ice and mud to get our rod holders in the ground. Hey, Jeremy Turner and Cat, how we doing, buddy? I'll tell you what, y'all, I'm ready for spring, for, uh, just to get the water temperature, you know, back up to the 60s and get them, get the flatheads, the blues more active. Don't get wrong, wintertime can be a phenomenal time to fish, but it just, you've got to find the right spot. I mean, the fish are not traveling as much as they were in that water Being a bank fisherman, it can be really tough in the winter just to try to find to find those select holes those fish will hold up in. I know Danny Stone and uh, Rustic Outdoors They've been fishing like, uh, oh, some sidearms off the river right next to the main channel in the creek. And they've been putting a whooping on the channel cat as of late. And we don't have, like in this area right here, this stretch where we fish, yeah, we got a few tributary creeks, but they're not very big at all. Nothing like what they've got, got feeding them down there. They're down south several miles. Yeah, you take a day like today where it's sunny, you get one of those tributary creeks. It might be just a few degrees warmer, but that's all you need. All you need for a fish to get in there and, you know, be packing or feeding. Thawed out. I'm sure it's yeah. thawed out by now. And then I chicken. Yeah, I've got two rods baited up for the shad and a whisker seed here. I got chicken on it. Oh, small town. That is definitely. Yeah, it's hard to beat. Uh, Small channel, like eating size channel cat for eating. Especially if you get them out of a good clear running creek or a lake. Or... I've got a creek right below my house that's, I'm going to do some video in this spring. It's just full of stuff. Oh. Got, got tapped. Uh, it's full of eating size channel cat. I'm going to do a couple drift fishing video, well, not drift fishing, but like saddle kayak, going old school with a bobber and some minnows. Both the same, bunch of log jams and rock piles in there.
Boy, one thing to y'all. We're right here on the main channel. I mean, right next to the main channel. We got this barge. Look how close this thing's going to come to us. Hey, Rob Fox. went by and I grabbed every rod because I thought, oh, I got a bite on every rod. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was jumping drag and you let me go about a half hour before you told me, hey, it's, it's hard doing that, buddy. Come on. <coughs> trial and error, trial and error. Hey, Warrior Heart, how we doing? Yeah, Rob, I'll take a chunk of you. I like to find him a little, find him a little dingy. Boat where he was uh, fishing there today. That's one thing about fishing these rivers, you never know what you're gonna find if you get around on some of these banks and these back backwards places you can find some neat stuff. I think this is going to be one of those spots. We're going to do some, uh, uh, nighttime fishing here this summer. I think we're going to try this, like, late spring, summer. I think we're going to come back to this spot. I think it might be a really good spot to come later this, uh, spring. Hey, Down East Tackle, how we doing? Mid-Tennessee, thanks for coming in. We catch some flyheads. Get a free pass for me, so that's how I am. Keep all down. I haven't. God, I couldn't tell you last time I've kept a flathead, but now I won't. I very seldom keep blue cat out of the Mississippi. But now, now about ball and power plant like we fish a lot. Yeah, we just need. We really need to keep more more out of there. That thing has too many of them. Under the river, yeah, it's been it's been forever since we kept any catfish out of the river. Me and my buddy Cujo were just talking the way over here. On the other side of the river, there's a uh, tributary creek down there. It's got a dike, a right wing dike, right on the tip of that. And he actually knows the gentleman that knows the landowner of that area. And I'm pretty sure we got access to it. We're going to get in there. But the only way we can get to it is we got to put our kayaks in this creek. We'll have to paddle down to that wing dike, which I think is going to be a fire, fire spot this spring so Ain't bad out until that wind kind of starts picking up. I think, like I said, I think it's going to be one of those spots we can probably come here tonight. Yeah. Set up. And then we've got the main channel right there, and you got these fish probably coming in out of there. Look how it swirls. Yeah. It kind of goes out there and reaches right back deep. I know my buddy Terry, my Terry Page, he fishes up there on the boat ramp himself. Right next to him. He, he 
caught some pretty nice fish, and then he had some massive takedown. Hey, real gals, how we doing? Stephanie, we had talked about going back to ball one day. Just uh, to play a safe card, being cold as it is, but right now, let's get back to the main river, see if we can't get on some big fish. Yeah, real gals came in with us and fished that uh, live stream we did last Saturday, and she was flat on fire for a while, just catching a snot out of them blue cat. It was good, good time. I know a lot of people like fishing right underneath the bridge, but they say they get kind of ignorant with you sometimes. They run you out of there. Yeah. Then, of course, point rest down there. I know a lot of people folks go in there, but it's kind of the same way. You can't only get on the damn levy anywhere no more. No, right. I can see that truck over there, but that's probably the farm. Well, there's a spot way down the river. You can drive you can right up on the levy there, and you got to walk. Yeah. Holy shit, you got to walk. <laughs> I mean, paid fish one time. We caught a lot of fish. Yeah, yeah we caught, caught several fish. What do you think? Oh, don't, you don't get hammered. No. It's down that way. There's no. a lot of dikes down that way. Down that stretch of river there, dude. Well, I think we picked up like three blue cat and two flathead. Really? Yeah. And the river is really high there, too. Yeah, she's definitely down. My gosh. <laughs> yeah, that's the lowest I've seen the river in the wintertime in, oh my gosh, years. I don't know if I've actually seen a sandbar here. <laughs> yeah. You know what really, I mean? Yeah. You might see a little bit, but not quite. Not quite. What I'd say here is next, uh, month or so. Toward the end of February, the river is going to make a big, big jump. We're going to start getting all the snow going down from the north and it's ice freezing. And I know the upper Mississippi above, above Keokuk is just in the throat solid. They said there's just chunks of ice everywhere. The Missouri River has been full of ice, and all of a sudden, ice, no day, no ice at all. Yeah. fish for 35 minutes. We can do about an hour and a half, maybe two hours here. Like I said, we're going to pick up, we're going to head up. Head to one of the wing dikes if this don't pan out. So like I said, I've been wanting to try this spot. Because this is one of the deeper holes on this, on this stretch right here, off the main bank. Catfish Dream, Steve Mosley. How we doing? I heard doing a little river fishing, trying to stay warm. So far we've had and I've had one little one little bump.
give this a little while, then we're gonna head down the river to a, uh, hey, Joey. And there's a uh, wing, another big wing guy uh, we're gonna fish off of that's got quite a bit of water, deeper water than the one I normally fish. And we're gonna give that a shot. Back out and slip it behind the dock fish off the sandbar I feel like I'm in Florida or something. Not running over the rocks like I'm normally doing break my neck. Watching right now. So we cast the side net. Try to hit for us. I've never, never tried this spot in the winter, so I have no idea where we're getting in. Maybe I wanted to try a little just different, something different. So what we got going on is a uh, boat ramp but it's a little bit of a point and you got a current seam running from that point out here the big eddy according to avionics it's almost 40 foot of water right here and i mean you throw it out there and it takes a bit for your line to come down so we figured we'd try this maybe get some new fish and plus we're right next to the main channel Don't fly. Oh, okay. Get a little, get some, uh, good mice fishing. So it hasn't been cold in here. I mean, it's been cold here, stone fly. And everything is froze around it, but it's not uh, solid enough to get out and fish. Oh yeah, if it, had, if it had been cold enough the last few days to freeze up to where you could walk out on it, most definitely, we would have tried some ice fishing today. I've been wanting to do some. It's been a long time since I've got to go.
Spalding, yeah. Alabama, yeah. <laughs> Oh, at night has been getting down the single digits here and warm up to about oh, 15, 8, 20 degrees. But today it's supposed to get up to 30, like never 30s today. So. And I'm thinking that's, well, that's when we're going to make a move down to this one wing dike because there's a flat that kind of comes up out of some deep water behind it. Maybe uh, some fish will come up out of that deeper water. Hey, Clayton, how are we doing, buddy? Yeah, maybe try that. Well, actually, we're going to give this a fair shot, see what happens. Usually I'll be a good spot to try. Uh, we'll be down to Blocko right now in the winter. Oh, yeah. Definitely. That being a deep, deeper stretch, I bet there's some fish back in there next summer. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Like they're below that, 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 where that waterfall comes down through there. How it's so deep right there. Well, I think we'd almost have to take our kayak, though, and get across the other bank. Yeah. Get everybody in there. Well, that once we get in the other side, probably the only way we can really reach that deep, deep water right there. I don't know what kind of service we got there. I couldn't remember if we had any service there or not. I think we made GoPro videos or something. Yeah, we made a video we, there. Remember we went down the, the creek there a ways that we talked about going. You know how far that thing went? Yeah. It's like we need to go just make a trip one day and just see all the access to the bridges that we mm -hmm. I think it was a pretty good way to do it. Mids. I think that was kind of before. Yeah, before yeah, I really started got doing live. Yeah, we got just make a little video. Which I still got to get those videos out. I still yeah. got to get those videos out from that. Hey Dallas, I'm on. Yeah, that's right, big man. That's why I want to. I want to. Want to get over freaking tank. Yeah, like I said, we're gonna try this just a little while longer. And then, like I said, then we're gonna head to one of our monster holes. So we caught some giant fish in the past. This is kind of an experimental deal we're trying today. Big Mike, I hope you are live tomorrow. I'll definitely be tuning in on in on you. Yeah, I'm just ready to get these water temperatures back up, get these fish back when they're on the prowl hot and heavy. Crazy clarity right now, and that's what I was looking at. I didn't think it was, but that's what I was seeing. It's just the gravel right there. Yeah. Wow, you really can't see where you. There's part of the clarity. But the Missouri River is like that, too. We're working on top of that power plant. I mean, you can see them sandbars, three, four foot of water. Okay. Yeah. I guess when that barge went by, that's, that's when I see kind of. You know, kind of stir up a little mm -hmm. bit. That is not bad at all, really. Man, Big Mike, I hope your wife gets better again. I, I know you guys have been fighting, being sick and everything. Yeah, I just got over some respiratory crap myself. Had a, oh my God, hey, had a cough and trapped for probably about a, about a month there. I couldn't shake it. 
my household, everybody was sick too, but everybody's in good health again. Yeah, I want to try that great thing you're talking about. <laughs> Tell you what, I couldn't believe when that guy said that. He said, "I'm not so today." I, I don't know. It might work in the winter too, but I was just sitting there, and really kind of talking about you, you know, what you do and all this stuff. And he's wanting to check you out. I said, "Yeah, it's in the summer days, you know, you don't really catch too many cats." And he told me that. And, you know, at first I was just thinking, "What? What are you talking? That ain't gonna." But then, you know, look at the chicken thing. Look at look at all these different things well, that people catch fish on, and it's like. I don't know, being hot. He said that's that was like you might ask people if they've ever ever tried anything. Well, like I know uh, when the mulberries are dropping, mm -hmm. them cats will feed like crazy in the mulberries. Really? Yeah. Oh, maybe it's something about that. I don't know. That just seemed kind of weird to me. It took like three days in a row, I had a Monday, and folks come back midweek. Well, hopefully, you can get in some jello. How much weight am I throwing, Big Mike? Uh, Two uh, outside rods. I'm throwing eight ounces of lead. Cause like I said, we're kind of we're not out in the main current. We're just right on that current seat. I'm throwing eight ounces. And it's holding easy. Cause the wish to see, I kind of threw it up short in a shallow. Well, not shallow water, but right off this ledge. And I've only got five knots on it. And it, and they're not it's not moving at all. But now we're getting ready to look, relocate to you in a little while. Yeah, I'll definitely will have to go up and wait a little bit. I'm trying to stay out of the, out of the heavy, heavy current right now because it seems like lately the fish I've been catching the river, everything's been in the easier current. What's going on, 351? Hey, Mr. Duggar, how we doing? I'm ready to get back out and dike this uh this coming up spring and stuff, chase some flatheads and well you don't get wrong, I love these big blue casts, but I don't know. It's kinda nice when you have that option when you might get a have a chance at a big flathead too. I've caught a few on the uh, winter flatheads, but not very many. Not very many at all. Work. 
Sunfish, how we doing? So it's been a yeah, it's been a big flat zero, which we could probably go to a uh, tributary arm or something and maybe get in some fish. But around here, we don't have uh, any big, big creeks flowing into until we get the uh, where the Kaskaski is. But that's another spot too. We uh, try. We don't get nothing going in here about a half hour, so we'll probably pack up. And we're gonna move down river, and I'll shut this live down, and then we'll restart another. So it takes a little bit because by the time we get unloaded, and have to we gotta walk quite a ways to get to our next spot. There you go, sunfish. Yeah, everything around here froze up. So, as far as our main, uh, like our ponds and lakes and everything, everything froze up, but, but it's not froze up enough where you can walk out on it yet. So, right now the creeks of the rivers are pretty much your only option. Right there at the frickin' mouth of the cast cast would probably been a there's some crazy, crazy deep water right there. Right there. You know the way the weather is, it, yep. it's kind of a you can't catch them if you're sitting inside, you know. That's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. You can't catch one again. You never know. You might drive hundred miles and you might drive five miles. The five mile one might pay off, you never know. Heck we've had days the conditions are just absolutely horrible. Seems like you're gonna let this go do it anyway. Some of the best that you think we Oh, definitely. Back in the day. Oh, oh gosh. I mean, yeah. it's miserable hot. Sometimes miserable cold. Well, one of the best live streams I had this summer is whenever that, like a hundred, the heat advisor was like 110 or some, some crap. Oh, man, I had one of the best live streams I had all summer really? last summer when it was that hot. In Texas, huh? Yeah. Love to be in Texas right now. Love to be. Hey, Gray Wolf, how we doing? I believe you're a new one coming in. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, we left the house this morning. It was uh, 12 degrees when we got out across the bridge here a little while ago. It was 17. 
but it's warmed up quite a bit, quite a bit. It's supposed to get up to 30, up to 30 today. So, but we're sitting on the sandbar, and I'll be honest, it really isn't bad, y'all. Cause we got like a, a, I guess the sun's reflecting off that sand, and it really ain't that bad. But it's gonna be a little different story when we head to that wing dike. Oh yeah, we'll get a gal in that wing dike. It's gonna be a little uh, big bonfire. Yeah, there's enough wood. We might have to try to get a little. Get some I little thought about getting one of them little flame sticks just to be like if it was that bad. Yeah, you get out there in that main channel, it's a whole different story than being right here. For the wife of a marshal last year, we was out when I went, and we had a heck of it. We did video, and I ended up losing that daggum video. Corrupted. Oh, man, we caught like three or four big blues. Cold flatheads that night, and uh, she wanted to fire. She was cold. So I go up there and make this fire. And every time I go mess with it, wham, I'd have a takedown. And I'd mess like, you know. Maybe that's all you need to do to do. Maybe we'll try to start making a fire and maybe we'll start getting some kids. You like when we was kids, used to, we cuss, me and my buddy, we used to do some time of year when we were kids. And, uh, we'd cuss a little bitty blue cats and we'd take a stick and we'd, and we'd, we'd cuss for him and cook yep. them up. You sit out there all day, it's pretty good. Getting tires on the Jeep. Man, I just had to get tires not too long ago. My truck. Whew. That hurt. That was like, uh, it was like $3,500 for tires all the way around the truck. But we can hammer some fish right here in the summer, though. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. Looks good. I mean, it looks really good. I mean, it's low, but it is kind of swirling back in where you think that bait fish be. Well, I'd be a hole. would be in here. Which would be a bad spot. Like, we have boat ramp come down. You got that ledge right yep. there. Right here is probably a heck of a place to catch them in the water when the water starts getting up high again. Yep. yep. I've seen it so high right there where your truck's at. I've seen people just cast off right here, just right up off the top there. Well, you're going to lose some hardware. Oh, yeah. With these I'm rocks. Like that, I'm like, I there went all my tackle box. Yeah, we're talking. I'll show you guys. This bank, big old bank we were just talking about. Normally, when the river's up, water's about halfway up these rocks right here. Yeah, it would be a heck of a spot, I think, when we. Whenever the, uh, once the river comes back up, the river is extremely, extremely low right now. Think about that, like we did back that one day, we got about a truck full of lead, remember? We walked up through there. Yeah. Go up here, you probably find some, I'm sure. Oh, I guarantee it, yeah. Yeah, we went to a popular fishing hole one, uh, one time, and the river made a real significant drop. You know, and you know, I bet we picked up a half a five gallon bucket of yeah, lead. At least. I still got some, I think. <laughs> Just a little information. We catch fish in Texas state parks, a lot of fish lines, and they've been doing that for the last five years. Really? I bet I'd better be in a state park, they'd be all over you about a fish license. Yeah, we fish multiple, multiple states a year. So we always got to try to keep our fishing license, you know, make sure we do the year. Like uh, in Missouri, <coughs> your fishing license is good till I believe the 1st of February. Then you got to, you know, the following year, then you got to renew. Then Illinois is uh, the 31st of March, I believe it is. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Then you got to renew. We but usually, as soon as the new year comes in, I just buy a new fish license for, for everywhere I fish. A 
last year, besides, let's see, I had fish lines here in Missouri, Illinois, Wisconsin, Tennessee, Kentucky, Arkansas, Florida. I'm trying to think. That might have been it for last year. He had tipping what's going on. Ian, it has been slow, but we're trying a uh, different spot. We're, we're on the main bank, and we're trying to spot where this point comes down or the sky hole right here. But we're not going to fish here too much longer. Okay, we're going to shut this stream down. We're going to head down river to a wind guys. Once we get it down there, I'm going to start another live stream. But I want to, we want to, we want to give this a shot, and we're going to head to more of a, I guess, proven spot for one time fishing. And it actually won't be the dike I'm normally fishing, so dike down river a little bit, a little bit of a pain in the butt to get to. But it's got real, real good water, good water behind it. And it's been good to me in the winter before. So. My state's our fishing lines are good for one year when you bought them. Dang, that'd be not very well. Especially if you uh, end up buying it midway through the season or something. I know some states like uh, Florida, it can be really tricky getting your fishing lines because you have your inshore fishing license, your offshore fishing license, your beach fishing license. And if you do any like shark fishing, you got to have a shark fishing I try to get down to Florida every year to uh, fish, and I do like some shark fishing and stuff. And uh, you got to take a test to get your shark fishing like I mean, that's what it's free. And every year after that, you just got to take a refresher. As a matter of fact, my next uh, video coming out is going to be a shark fishing video where uh, we had a young man with us, and we caught an uh, uh, 11 foot tiger shark off the beach. So that's actually going to be our next video coming out. Ian, yes, this spot, it, it is a productive spot. Like, I came here back in no, early November with my dad, and I caught a pair of 30s out of this spot, a pair of 30-pound cat, and I have a friend of mine fishes just up just a little bit, and he has caught it really, really good. Yeah. And I think it's one of these just super, super easy to get to compared to most of the spots we fish. Heck yeah, Gray Wolf, you never know when you might catch a good deal on them. All right, folks. 
me and my partner just talked here. We are gonna uh, pack it up where we're at, and we're gonna we're gonna head down river to a uh, wing dike down river. So we gotta pack everything up, and we're gonna shut this live stream off. But you guys keep up, uh, keep tabs on it. Hit that notification where you know we should be live here in the next half hour, 45 minutes, an hour, an hour tops. We should be back live again. And we're gonna get set up out on the end of a wing dike out on the main current. And there was a big, nice uh, sky hole out here and up some slack water off to the side. So we're gonna try to head there because that's been a proven spot for us in the winter. So we're gonna shut this one down. And hopefully we'll see you guys back here in a little bit. We'll catch you guys back in just a little while.